I like don't have any classes that actually. I need those coins. Yeah, I need more bag storage. Be nothing. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I have like 950 coins right now. I have like 140. Because I, like <laughs> I just keep on saving them because I never see the box I really like. That's yeah. what I'm saving up for. Yeah, I haven't either. And so I gotta finish that, and then. Oh. <clears throat> Congratulations with the. Day of the first uh, human in space. Well, that's not it. So, though a few selected uh, research projects on uh, rocket fuel, but it's, it was one of the first possibilities. So, uh, who we are and what are we? What are we doing? Everyone is so yeah, silent. I, I, didn't, I didn't get used to it. <laughs> okay. Why does it look like his eye has a pain? <laughs> oh, everyone agreed and decided what to research, right? That's it. <laughs> Done. So, um, let's... Uh, the main goal is to pursue your your research areas, uh, and in the meanwhile, I will entertain you by some additional pieces of information. But they're very, very secondary. Just uh, if you just stand up and flip, or just open your notebook and start doing project, it will be better in less than time. <laughs> <clears throat> so we are in the course of this industry. We in the lectures we get through background information. In the web, we got ideas how to run, write software, and write hardware. And right now, you are you have already built models and you compute observables, or at least you plan. So, um, light and metal. So here are some of your projects. I just, uh, for my memories, try to uh, put a graphical summary and I was not lying there were, there was no intentional lie but this procedure is maybe a little simplified in, in the in the way that it is not super general or just too general uh, based on, on specifics of your, of your choices you may more defy the research procedure Typically, in the making it more complex rather than more simple, and um, I don't care what is on, on the slide. But as as I see from from your choices, you do have about two general types of research projects. Well, more than two, but roughly roughly two. So one is uh, catalytic activity or absorption desorption. Experiments, commercial experiments, and another is uh, interfaces of two materials. Right. So, um, if you do reactions, and uh, so there are three reaction uh, projects. One, two, three. And the three is uh, checking. No, I'm... <laughs> he, he, blame him. <laughs> and uh, there is one person who also um, will do something relevant to reactions, but he doesn't uh, realize it yet. So when you have more, you absorb to the surface, and you can heat it up and see how it desorbs. So a thermal desorption experiment. So it's also some sense of reaction, and then you either heat or set up momentum, and then you see how the geometry and electronic properties do change based on, based on structural changes induced by, by heat or, or motion collisions. But uh, there is uh, another set of uh, uh, Daniel, you are in the water, you belong to the groups. 
<laughs> sorry, for um, interfaces. And in the interfaces, of course, we will do healing and see structural changes due to the heat, or we can induce bumping two interfaces into each other and see uh, if any fun happens. But uh, when you just explore ground state structure of your, of your interfaces, you have already realized that uh, you may need to split your model on uh, A plus B, A separately, B separately, and then compare for binding energy and for matching of density of states. Whether the density of states of combined system can be represented as summation of the density of states of independent system, or they induce bend bending onto each other, whether they induce shift uh, of, of, of energies. Another thing that uh, was not in, in this list, but I will briefly mention today, and we will practice it next Wednesday on the lab, is inspection of charge transfer character of excited states. So if you create excitation in a true way or in oversimplified way, as we, as we did with pairs of orbitals, uh, the excitation may reside uh, on species A, species B, or it may be charge transfer. In simplest case of metal organic particles, <coughs> uh, like uh, electron goes to metal, hole stays on lumens, or opposite. And if it is bigger interface, this is the main principle of photovoltaic when electron stays on one material, hole stays on another one. So you need special tools to assess it. Of course, we can do uh, drawing of hundreds of orbitals, but it is not the best uh, opportunity. Some orbitals are good, but not hundreds. Directors, do not forget. Many directors, 24 is not too much. What we did last time on the lecture, it is um, stickers that you did. Main procedure uh, for chart of DFT. You have seen it, right? So uh, you do set equation, equation, equation for orbitals. And uh, the orbitals determine the uh, density. And here it should be here exponential density. That again. Uh, determines the uh, equation for, for orbitals. So if you are uh, not scared by this uh, expression, you are masters of density function. And if you are curious how density is converted into energy or potential, there are some notations. And in the simplest way of the uh, local Density approximation, which is based in the four third elements. With some uh, uh, factors depending on spin polarization, if you have spin up and spin down. If you involve der spatial derivative of uh, density, then you are not local, but you are generalized by the point. So when we met last time, we were making slow start into the theory of excited states. There are many theories of excited states, and we start with the simplest one, which is the extension of density functional theory. So density functional theory for excited states is called how? Time dependent? Yes, time dependent density functional theory. Please uh, raise your hands if you did practice uh, running jobs one, two, three, four, okay, majority, um, at least half. So, um, which question do you ask yourself when you run through DFT? It is practical, technical. When, when you see it for the first time, or when you hear it for the first time. Huh? 
Yes. So the uh, main goal of uh, tangible embedded function theory is to get spectra. Oscillator strengths and transition energies. Do your transition do transition energy depend on time? When you run TDDFT. Do your oscillator strengths uh, depend on time? Do your geometries depend on time? So you have time independent geometries, time independent energies, and time independent oscillator strengths. Where's why time dependence? What is time dependent? Why is, is were there stupid people who call it time dependent or is it a typo? <laughs> Uh, so, it, I was puzzled by this question. Uh, several people who just practically run it were not. When I first heard it, I was asking several people. No one was answering. <laughs> Do not ask. Just run. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, to run this job, you can do it in, in five minutes. You don't need much. But through a couple of, uh, of meetings here in the lecture call, we will answer the question, where is time dependence? <laughs> Why it is inserted into the name? So one thing. And you already know the, the goal. Goal of the state theory is practical. Immediate goal for a turbo is to predict absorption spectra. Good. So, I am still reviewing what we were doing last time. If we are immersed in the context of density function theory, then we agree that density determines potential, determines total energy, and the whole uh, DFT procedure depends on density of electrons. Then we look how density of electrons is constructed. When uses this uh, artificial uh, orbitals of non-interrupting electrons from auxiliary space, right? That's my idea of, of what i But they generate sufficient enough, sufficiently good density to uh, reconstruct main observables. The equation for construction of density out of orbitals is just to take only those orbitals which are occupied, take their absolute value square. It's function of single position in space, and just add together. You did derive this equation uh, in class, right? This one. <coughs> Conjugated orbital itself, summation uh, up to home. But if we want to be picky, rigorous, general, we can consider that indices of these two orbitals do not formally do not need to be the same. They can be different. And they actually do not need to run up to a home. They can go to the whole every orbital that is available. And then the uh, instead of summation on the orbitals, we can put factor that can be zero, one, or something else, and it will be a mask, a protocol, a record, at which fraction, even pair of orbitals, contribute to total density. Okay? I didn't lie, I didn't deceive you, and I didn't contradict DFT theorems. So just for formality. And if we, uh, if we are speaking about ground state configuration of the molecule, then this matrix has once on the main diagonal until homo, zeros on the main diagonal from homo and up, and nothing on the off diagonals. But you have already practiced and uh, the fair me weight command in Vast. You know that you can artificially populate, you can promote electrons from homo to homo or further up. Right? You can make artificial population. What else? 
if the molecule is experiencing transitions, not just instantaneous transition before and after, if it is in process of being transported, transmitted from ground to excited and back, move, side, circle. There is a chance that off-diagonal elements of this uh, density matrix will be also non-zero. So, um, okay. Yes. And uh, we can symbolically speak about the part of density matrix that from one to home of first constitute only originally occupied to only originally unoccupied and for cross terms where one index uh, covers uh, occupied and other unoccupied. Okay, also just notation. So GG, GE, EG, EE. -E. Um, ground, ground, excited, excited. Ground, excited, excited, ground. Also, I didn't introduce anything, anything new, just notation. Now, any or vast majority of characterization techniques for characterizing materials is interaction with electromagnetic field of different frequency, different intensity. Any objections? No. Uh, and uh, if it is optical spectra, it is just electromagnetic uh, wave of in the optical range. So uh, there is a so-called uh, perturbation theory that you may have been uh, time-dependent perturbation, not just forever. That you may have been exposed, or you will be exposed during your career if you stay in uh, science, and uh, it is unavoidable if you will do some sort of theory. So. If you consider that your electromagnetic field is weak, weak, not like first week of May, but uh, not very intense, then uh, the section of the density that, that corresponds to occupied orbitals will stay almost unchanged. The segment that uh, corresponds to transitions from ground to excited or back will be linearly proportional to intensity of uh, electric field. And the one corresponding to creating actual uh, excited populations will be proportional to the square. And uh, you love Taylor series since you're here. So uh, calculus didn't kill you when you came here. And you know that if there is a power series with, uh, going, with powers going higher and higher, and the argument is smaller than one, then you can drop higher order terms, right? So we can drop second order term and keep only the, the first one. So again, it is not yet re go rose uh, thing. I'm not doing derivations of, of final equations, but the goal of excited state theories and more specifically time dependent theory is to find out this first order correction to the total density created by external radiation. First order correction to density. And if you find it, we can find the, the rest of observables, including spectrum. So we did stop at about this uh, place last time. I don't know about you, I got tired when I saw this equation. Uh, so this is only an example of how to expand this uh, block using blocks of the, of the density matrix in explicit form. So each of these 
rho gg rho ee is a matrix, right? And it has two indices because it is represents contribution of a pair of orbitals. So if we are looking only on the gg segment, it is here, right? And if we predominantly stay in the ground state, we will have rho ho ho, rho ho minus one, ho minus one, and it, it will start from <laughs> rho one one, right? All other elements will be zero. And all other elements of, of other blocks will be zeros as well. But I'm trying to avoid uh, rigor rose derivations so that first we get main idea. And then if you have steam and interest, we can go into more detail. But the main purpose is not to kill interest and uh, get main idea first, or maybe order main idea. So as you support, as you agree, since no one objected, it means that you are supported. Uh, the idea that only rho g e and rho e g, the off diagonal blocks of density matrix, are perturbed when the system is interacted by weak electromagnetic radiation. So, technically, mathematically, the goal is to find out. So we need to find this matrix and this matrix. I learned something new today. I learned how to highlight. <laughs> <laughs> so this one is assumed and changed in the first order correction. This one um, will be will get changes only in second order correction. And this one will get non-zero contributions in the lowest order of taking into account uh, interaction with this electromagnetic wave. So the goal of excited state theory, particularly kind of intensity function theory, is to find these contributions, find this method. By the way, uh, you may feel irritation because you came here to get entertainment, not a uh, strong uh, intellectual challenges. <laughs> Why should I read through so many things? <coughs> and how, how are they related to real life and to my spectrum? So, um, if the excited state is the lowest, if you have only the lowest excited state, contributed by transitions from homo to homo, only this element, rho, ho, wu, will be non-zero. The rest will be zeros. Okay? So this which pair of originally occupied and originally unoccupied orbitals contribute to excited state. Okay? So we need this matrix. And in most cases, this one is uh, that doesn't differ much. They are um, to some sort of conjugate. Do you like matrices? Love them. Huh? Love them. Uh, only one person <laughs> asks matrices. What do you love better, <laughs> matrices or vectors? Vectors. Yes, I agree with you. Vectors are simple. <laughs> it's just a list of numbers. So we need matrices, but we love vectors. Why don't we write the methods in vector form? Huh? It, it is long, but um, there are benefits. Vectors are simpler to percept by human brain. A lot of um, codes and tools and uh, subroutines have been written to process vectors and how matrix affect on the vector. Uh, if you are... Uh, 
fund of programming, scientific programming, uh, and um, calling several times, you have. Uh, oh, it's called what? You have heard about this abbreviation. <laughs> you may or you may not. So if you are programming in C++ Fortran and you need to diagnose a method, <coughs> you do not write a code to do it. You just execute a subroutine from a package. And for most of the mathematically intense operations. Otherwise, our development of civilization will stop if you re <laughs> recode any simple operation. So um, we need to find this method. And methods are often found by procedure of uh, eigenvalue procedure. <coughs> so we just need, if we, no one objects, which means you support of storing methods. Store, I like this much more. Store <laughs> methods as And now, we agree on this format of storing matrix as a vector, and we need an equation that will try to find this vector. Okay? And the meaning of this vector is relative contribution of a pair of elementary excitation into the excited state. Of course, this vector or pseudo vector will be different for each excitation energy. So we need to find energies that which system does respond to excitation because you know resonance. If system is off resonance, nothing changes. And for each resonance frequency, you need to find such vector. The lowest excitation will be home of woman. For others, it will be more and more. Okay. Make sense? Good. And Alisa, do you like long notations of vectors? No, I like No, them. good. I do not like them at all. <laughs> you wanted to say something else? Oh, no, I just like them. Like, it's, it's hard for me. I never learned it going up and down, so, like, my brain likes it. Mine too. Reading. I do not, I hate this long notation. Okay. <laughs> and uh, why don't we abbreviate this strange long pseudo column by something very simple? Like, x and y. <laughs> you are with me? Okay, good. Approved. So we need an equation for x and y. x and y are unknown. Find x and y. So main goal of time dependent density function of theory is to find x and y. Good? X, fine. Um, it was, uh, I planned to stop here last time, but right now it will be physical, logical lecture, and physical lecture will not overlap. It will be a little phase shift. There, and I didn't have time to change uh, slides, therefore I need to <laughs> repeat re uh, um, refreshment of previous information once again. <laughs> so, Density? No, it is not long. For ground state, thermal distribution for uh, and yes, field temperature. For rocks, we need to find x and y. Okay. This is a plan of uh, what I want to go through. If you get through, you'll be great. If not, you'll continue up. If you know each uh, point in this uh, list, you can stand up and do it, or just open a newspaper and do it fresh news. Uh, before we continue with uh, density, time dependent density function of theory, TDV is of T, which basically you already understand what it is and how it works. You just need a little more details. But before we go there, I wanted to tell something that can be done without TDX. 
it can be done without our forcing the fight fair, fairly weight populations. I want to uh, open an intrigue that um, Christian was intrigued for half a year, and Austin probably was not intrigued since he dropped the course. Or, no, he was intrigued, but he burned out. He was not able to sustain this intrigue. The intrigue is um, reorganization of structure of monkey upon potentiation. The uh, reason for stoxion, strong content factors, polarons in different areas of science, uh, there are different abbreviations. So if you uh, were practicing spectroscopy in your experimental life, or if you were taking courses in spectroscopy, maybe organic spectroscopy, you have seen this figure. Who, didn't, who hasn't seen figure like this in previous life? Okay, who has seen this figure before? Mm -hmm. Everyone. My, my life is easier. So, uh, you have drawn state, excited state, and this point, only one point, corresponds to G only. So geometry is multi-dimensional, but you put it on one axis, right? So it will be the geometry will be de determined only by one coordinate if it is diatomic mode. So it is a literally correct figure for diatomics, and for all others, it is symbolic representation. Upon for the excitation, you have uh, R zero geometry at ground state. As soon as you excite and let it relax, the potential energy surface for excited state can differ from potential energy surface in the ground state. We said differ from ground. Means its equilibrium position is different. And this one will be R. state gives different geometry. Okay. And since uh, potential energy surface is not flat, also you give different transition energy. Right? And um, potential energy surfaces are often multi-dimensional and complicated things. But there is a way to approximate it, to project multi-dimensional potential energy surface onto one dimensional figure, assuming that when you photo excite and it experiences rearrangement along specific path in this multi-dimensional space. And this specific path is referred to as reaction coordinate. Okay? So there is a way to project in one dimension. And what else? Lisa, do you like shape of this of this potential surface? Do you know which equation to fit it into? No, no. If if you want a function that will coincide with this uh, shape, which function should it be? Can you? Can anyone answer it immediately? Harmonic Unharmonic oscillator, maybe Morse potential, well, something not uh, immediately easy. But if the elongation, if the distance between ground and excited uh, states are small, why don't we assume that both potential energy surfaces are harmonic oscillators? And in order to determine curvature and reproduce uh, uh, the harmonic oscillator, it is sufficient to know just two points. Same as for, if you, in Euclidean geometry, if you know two points, you can put straight line across. Uh, this um, 
one can do the same uh, for uh, parables. One can reproduce their, their shapes. If you know that uh, one, uh, one of the points in this pair uh, stays in the uh, minimum, not any two points, not sufficient for parable. You need two. But if you know for sure that one is in the minimum, then two are sufficient. So, what are the coordinates of these four magic points? So, optimization at ground state, optimization at excited state, energy of vertical transition when we keep ground state geometry, and energy of vertical transition when we keep uh, the excited state geometry. This, I do not see immediate necessity for any of your projects to, to do it practically. This would be most important if you would have donor acceptor pair of two molecules that get uh, elongated substantially. But uh, it's better to mention now. So the project that uh, Christian and Austin were doing in PCAM were based on calculations of this two points based on the Fermi weight uh, optimization for excited state. So with this little hint, you should be able to reproduce uh, the results that you used as an input for, it, for your uh, project in, in PCAM. Okay? But when this was just a little uh, note so that uh, I do not forget and, and tell it to you now, because you may decide that you need it for your project. In the didactic, academic part of the lectures, when we focus on TDFT, we will consider only vertical transition. We will assume that geometry is frozen. Otherwise, there will be too many, too many things simultaneously. What else? This frequency is typically bigger, this is typically small, blue and red. And the, the difference of at this frequency, emission occurs, right? <laughs> at this frequency, absorption occurs. Is their difference is referred to as? Sculpture. Yes. Yes. And if um, the frequency of, of these parabolas turn out to be steep enough, so not very flat, if quantum nature of these parabolas do are important, then um, the transitions may occur not at any frequency, but only at discrete uh, differences between quantized uh, vibronic levels, right? So this situation is very frequent in the molecular spectroscopy. Yes? Uh, so what happens if you do this and try to do an optimization of the excited state, but then you have two excited states that cross? And then the originally higher one actually is now the new lower one. Is that ever happened? Yes. It happens. Most of the time. It's automatically taken care of. No. It, 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 is, um, it is not included into standard procedures. You cannot use black box. You need to think creatively when you meet such situations. So, <coughs> what do you want me to write here under, under the axis? I'll write what? Lambda and energy. Right? So they're complementary, respectively. So the Absorption spectrum happens 
Evet. Higher energies and lower wavelengths, right? And the emission spectrum happens at lower energy or uh, longer wavelengths. So, absorption So absorption corresponds from uh, going to different vibrant states here. The higher frequency emission uh, going from lowest vibrant state to several uh, vibrant states there. And they occur at different frequencies. It is a very typical uh, picture for experimental spectrum <coughs> of uh, Organic chromophores. Okay. And yet, still away from TDDFT, but making a little notation that uh, primarily targeting. But uh, everyone else will, will uh, benefit. So there was another intrigue how to project multi three dimensional density onto one dimension. Right? So if you have orbital or anything else, um, you can plot three dimensional either surfaces of orbitals or total density or potentials. And uh, there is a practical necessity to analyze them. So what I'm going to show now, it is more related to the labs, but uh, who knows how they will go. So I better give you a heads up now and we'll try it next lab. Try, try to prepare uh, molecular dynamics which is needed for, for your project and uh, launch it, make, make it running. You, you also, Switching to different mode. You also may get strange emails authored by uh, NERSC, oh, National Energy Supercomputer Center. Just agree with everything. <laughs> I was wondering what that email was about. Uh, I. Huh? It, it tells you it created a username and stuff. It created username, and there sh could be a link for like setting up your password. And uh, signing the user account, putting box. I'm not doing that. Right? Uh, we will use this uh, accounts next uh, lab and, and uh, just make sure that it is activated. Some of you have already had accounts there. When I was trying to go, it tells no, no, this person is already in the system. So when you have three-dimensional distribution, there are two ways to, or three ways to analyze it. Just plot as is, and if you have many orbitals, you probably already got exhausted with homeworks, where you plot, plot, and plot, plot, and plot orbitals. If you're not got exhausted with it, it's my fault. I needed to <laughs> to create this driving uh, driving force and make some scary homework with hundred orbitals. Anyways. <laughs> uh, but there is a bypass way to, to deal with it in uh, least effort. So we draw orbitals not because they are pretty, not because of aesthetic pleasure, although many of us just like looking at them. Um, we have purpose to analyze charge distribution, localization, formation of uh, Charge separation of excited states, uh, formation of dipole on the surface, such things. And uh, there are additional ways. So, first, one can project three dimensional distribution in one dimension, just into waiting for the right? Agree?
So uh, in the directory where you have partial chess dentinus, you type curl in band integrate, and then uh, it will perform this operation. We'll go over uh, when you time for that. Another thing is to make integration over all three um, dimensions, but multiply your distribution by uh, position value. This will be expectation value of position. And if you compare expectation value of position for one other one, another one, another one, those that are localized on species A will have value centered at this species, that you, the ones that will be localized at species B will be centered there. So you can to analyze vector is much easier than the distribution. And if your species are offset along uh, one dimension, or let's say Z, then X and Y components of the vector will be zeros and you need to compare only Z projection. So you can perform this operation for like 100 orbitals and quickly sort them out, tell which orbitals belong to the species A, which orbitals belong to the species B. Those of you who are looking at the case of materials may benefit from all this. Here are examples like uh, orbital localizing one area, orbital localizing another area, and if you integrate along uh, two dimensions, it's, it, it, it becomes one dimensional projection of orbital. Okay? Done with um, side stuff. Now we are returning to time dependent density functional theory, but again, we are not jumping too quick. I'm going to repeat a statement that uh, I told you the first week. We go of time dependent density functional theory is to reproduce. Absorption spectra in the visible range, right? Yes? Uh, let me jump. I will return to this slide. That was confirmed, yes. <laughs> I figured it out, by the way, that's the absorption. Yeah, good. <laughs> so, if our goal is to Repeat absorption spectrum of our material or our molecule. It means we need continuous, continuous function of absorption as function of, of energy excitation. You can put each bar forming that. So in incident level. And then you need two sets of data. They turn resonant transition energies, right? And in simplest cases, those are just energy differences between occupied and unoccupied orbitals. Later on, it, it can be more complicated. And oscillator strengths corresponding to this resonance energy. So these two sets of data are expected output from TDDFT. So practically. If we don't care about any theories, we just need to do applied research. We need two sets of data. On one hand. On the other hand, I was uh, already I was already telling you that by some reason we need to do this favorite letters of Alisa. Instead of long vectors, we used letters X and Y. Is, is the goal of lecture to torture young brains? No. Uh, even if it happens, it is not an original intention. So everything should be connected logically. It's a fault of instructor if it doesn't seem connected. But this x and y vectors should have, that we are, we are going to find, or TDDFT theory is going to predict, are intermediate data 
that allow to compute oscillator strength. Oscillator strength of our global observable is spectral distribution, but our um, in local data that we practically need to compute are oscillator strengths. So our task, if if you would live at the times when TDBFT was not yet designed, and we need to hire a group of theorists and tell design new theory for us, the goal is just to predict oscillator strengths. Do whatever reverse engineering or whatever, however you, you can do it. So we were happily surviving without TDDT. We were doing independent orbital approximation. So what we what we did, we multiplied function orbital with index i, function orbital with index j, with a little star here, and with r in between. And then we told that it is transition dipole vector for a given transition, for a given pair of a transition represented by a pair of orbitals, right? At least one should agree. Because it is your favorite subject. So as soon as the vector has three components that uh, you have shown where they are located in the oscillator strength file. Last three columns. <coughs> if you want to find it separately, it will be only x instead of vector. Right? Same same equations for y and z. So I do not have five. So three projections. And then we do absolute value square of the vector, which means row by column, dx square, dy square, dz square, right? And when we multiply it by some additional constants, it will be oscillator strength. So we do have procedure to get oscillator strength, but it is based on the approximation of independent problem. Why we are not happy? Why we need new theory? Why independent orbitals are not sufficient? Um, anyway, so I saw four hands uh, answering the question, uh, answering yes to practical practice in uh, running TB DFT. Right? Can you lift? Your hands once again. One, two, three, four. Okay, now it is three and a half. You, you, <laughs> you anticipate provocation from me. So imagine what would you hear back from reviewers if you try to publish spectrum based on the independent orbital approximation. Is there like a field to those fluctuations in the orbitals? So in this approximation, one assumes that photo excitation doesn't change shape of orbitals, doesn't shape energy uh, offset between orbitals. It means that when uh, you promote electron from occupied to unoccupied, the excited electron doesn't interact with created hole. It neglects electron hole attraction. But in fact, even if it is localized, they are they attract, and uh, often this attraction has a negative stabilizing contribution to, to the energy. So if you do same functional TDDFT results, it can be lower energy than uh, same functional same object in independent orbital approximation. So there are several um, interactions that are skipped. In the independent orbital approximation, and to uh, in the hunt for precision, one needs some more advanced theories. On one, on another hand, 
how do we know that excitation is composed? Uh, do you need to go uh, rest? Mm -hmm. Do you need to go a specific term? Yeah? Uh, so, how do we know that an excit excitation of resonance condition will be composed only on one pair of electron hole? What if our valence band top occupied orbitals and conduction band bottom unoccupied orbitals are degenerate? Then it is very likely that lowest excitation will include superposition of multiple orbitals, but it will be one excited state. So this concept is missed in our independent uh, orbital approximation. We need to be able to compose one transition out of multiple electron hole pairs. So it is another reason uh, for uh, creation or learning TGDFT. So it uh, creates correction absorption spectrum in uh, transition energy in uh, superposition of multiple pairs contributing to oxidation and some other things. I wouldn't be able to reproduce this uh, with close eyes and close eyes. The, um, we need to remember only that it is proportional to square of the um, transition density vectors, and the factors are not quite constant. Well, pi is constant, mass of electrons is constant, charge of electrons is constant, Planck is constant, pi is constant, but uh, transition frequency is not constant, so it will be different at different frequencies. The result contribution to postulator study, but it is in the Inserted in, uh, included in the code. So when you do a stellar strength, it is already there. Ah. What are an Einstein coefficients? Uh, have you seen or read about Einstein coefficients? Give you more service. What? No? Einstein coefficients? No? Yes? Yes. Einstein coefficients? Okay. Um, good. You don't need to keep your hands up. <laughs> <laughs> Einstein coefficients forever. <laughs> so, when you do have interaction between light and matter, there are, right now I'm not deriving anything, I'm just giving phenomenological facts. If needed, we'll go to details, but let's just skim through the facts. If we have, let's say, molecule and light, electromagnetic wave, which processes can light impose, which process can happen to a molecule? Do not answer. I'll give more details. The question is tricky. Before interacting with light, molecule can be excited or in ground state. The light can be high intensity light from source or I need to draw something. I will ask you to answer the question, but I need to give some um, background information. Lasers, yes? You, you know how to build laser at home. Probably it will not work, but you, you know, you, you need to, <laughs> to, to mirrors and active media and source of light. So, yeah. reso uh, optical resonator, two mirrors. And the electromagnetic wave of given frequency forms standing waves. <laughs> and then the it, it is the same frequency, same number of, of nodes, but amplitude can be different, right? So the amplitude of, uh, of this uh, standing wave mathematically behaves, behaves in the same way as harmonic oscillator. Intensity of mode. So the standing wave is called mode. Intensity of mode in a laser resonator behaves as harmonic oscillator. 
which means it is context. Give me a sign if you are not happy if, uh, if, if I'm going to click. Okay, everyone approves and, and remembers and takes notes or memorizes. What's the way? So, yeah, electromagnetic wave. Which means if we have the intensity high, it just goes force and down at given energy. But if we approach the lower energy of this oscillator, it will be quantized. Which means that even if you do not have any sources of light, if you do not have flashlights, if you do not have stars, if you have just free universe, which simply obeys laws of nature, free space, no atoms, no electrons, no stars, no flashlights, only electromagnetic field performing zero point oscillations. So there will be non zero intensity uh, of electromagnetic field even in vacuum. Okay? There is a little bit of light everywhere, even if there are no sources. <sighs> so now the question. <coughs> and the answer is Einstein coefficients. You, you may d derive answer by your, if, if you shout it out loud quicker than myself, I, uh, we will call it Einstein coefficient, but whoever will be first. <laughs> so for interaction of molecule and light, which processes are possible? Give the number of processes which are possible, and if, pos if possible, name them. Alisa wants to be first, because she's smiling. No, 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 some elementary process of interaction between light and matter. You, you know, you can, to name at least one. Excited, excitation, first excitation. So, uh, it will be uh, not Einstein coefficient, but it will be Robert's coefficient. So, absorption, absorption. Robert's coefficient. So, you may assume that if I'm asking this question, uh, the number of processes will be a little bit more than one. Photoelectric effect, it is uh, um, absorption to the continuum of unbound states. So to, it's also a uh, credit of Einstein, but it is, to some sense, very similar to absorption. So you go from ground to some excited state. Yes? They want us to transition between states of relaxation. Okay. So what do you... Um, <coughs> Your name will be there, but you need to be more specific. So you, uh, um, Braden, assumes that a system is in the excited state only. And due to interaction with light, it may go to ground state. Yes. But with which light doesn't interact? With uh, light from uh, source or with background radiation? Stimulated emission. Yeah. Stimulated emission. Okay. I forget why. Okay. So, <laughs> so I think it has to be a light source. Uh, yeah. Stimulated emission. Then you also have spontaneous emission, which doesn't need a light source. That's true. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. stimulated emission, it will be weight coefficient. <laughs> coefficient and number three. Spontaneous. Emission. Spontaneous. It will be shock coefficient. So now we do have Robert's weight shock theory of interaction of light and matter. <laughs> RWS theory. So there is an absorption 
and two types of emission. Stimulated, which means the transition down in energy occurs due to interaction with strong light from the solar. And there is another process when transition down happens due to interaction with background radiation. So no one stimulates it. It occurs spontaneously, therefore it is spontaneous. Typically it is it happens much slower, but it does happen. For, so uh, induced absorption or induced emission occur typically on the order of uh, like 100 femtoseconds, maybe one picosecond quick, depending on intensity. Spontaneous emission is even in very optically active systems occurs longer than one nanosecond in the milliseconds. It is the reason why all chemicals that we purchase from sigma alpha are in ground state. Because uh, postal service delivered longer than one nanosecond and everything goes to ground. Okay. Induced excitation, induced emission, and spontaneous emission. They all do depend on uh, square of transition dipole on oscillator strength. But uh, <coughs> inverse of the Spontaneous emission, it's a great. <coughs> so, uh, and the uh, rate of this uh, spontaneous emission determines lifetime, how long the system will stay excited if, if it was excited. Okay? It is also one of the observables that you can compare to experiment. And based on, uh, on this equation, if you do have oscillator strength and energy of transition, you can compute it. And you can compare it with experiment. If you take the oscillator strength from uh, independent orbital approximations, uh, the number will be a little bit off. You can compare only qualitative trends. So for this excitation, it will be longer lifetime, for another, it will be shorter lifetime. But if you do TDDFT, there is a chance that you will you will hit very close to experimental data or predict something that experiment was not. Uh, so, one of the practical benefits of the course, you can predict radiative life times of the excited states in, in molecules and nanostructures. And I do not need to instruct anything else. You already have the data for uh, oscillator strengths. You know how to compute it. One of the versions of the, of the of the codes actually make one more column and it uh, just writes down lifetime. Favorite question. Again, favorite question. <laughs> so, what do you um, in um, one week ago? Um, so London told us that something like I'm suffering from collective editing. <laughs> something like this. <laughs> and during the collective edit editing, instead of delta, there was symbol D. So it, it took probably the longest time to recognize it. So uh, formally, uh, if one can set up each line with delta function, in infinitely small uh, with but practically, you know that Stokes shift oscillate, vibrations, oscillations, Doppler, there are several mechanisms for line broadening. Therefore, instead of uh, infinite uh, symbol sharp delta, we, it's not actual delta, it is delta sub sigma. So delta is finite with 
So we replace the, the function with Gaussian Viscanity. And it is how we construct absorption spectra. If you compute them and report them in your uh, written reports, which will be mandatory for the course, do not forget to mention. Just copy paste from notes or type it into a question editor. But I'm teasing yourself and myself, but those are independent orbital approximation errors. We need energies and also other strengths, not from here, but from TDFT, from X and Y uh, symbols. It's fine. No apologies. Let me see. Maybe. I, I think I'm, I'm very excited to tell you about excited states, but uh, it is uh, twelve fifteen, and maybe it will be reasonable thing to start uh, next meeting unless you all um, tell give us more <laughs> give us more so anyone votes for departing in peace one two three anyone votes for sitting longer and entertaining more material Refrain from voting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> By majority of votes, we are finishing our discussion here and accumulate energy for our next meeting. Um, do not relax on weekend. Invest all of your free time in running molecular dynamics of your body. <laughs> so stop here. Stop. Stop here. And it will be lecture number 26. I feel like we went through more lectures last year. Huh? I don't know. I, I plan to finish in 30, but there will be, um, in, in addition to deductive, oh, there will be, be a three a week. Three. Um, there will be one presentation mm -hmm. and uh, at least one for uh, grading written reports, like yep. improving as, as we do on, on group yep. And maybe one more with instruction how to write papers. So, and finished, and Brendan wanted integration introduction. <laughs> yes. Okay, so I'm using it again. Um, so, the only file that I need to do is I'm saying, 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 I'm all four files. Oh. Postcard, postcard, K points, M okay. card, and the, in the M card, just change, change the number. Um, also, I do not fully remember how to transfer the files from directory to directory. Okay. So, uh, okay. I do not think that uh, this information needs to be on the recording. Oh, no. <laughs> this is fine.